me introduce myself. My name is Glenn Collins, and I am in charge of business development um, at CDI. And um, my role is to you know bring programs like this that are slightly innovative to the marketplace that will help our customers um, in a variety of ways of getting more value, getting more technology in the in the hands of more students, um, and helping promote the utilization of that technology in the classroom. So we've done the polling questions. Um, as I said, I'll be your host today. I do appreciate you taking time out, especially at this time of year on how crazy it is. Uh, I'll go as quickly as I can. It is an interactive uh, process. You do have the ability to post questions to me as we go on. I will uh, commit to getting uh, the questions as many as I can answer while we're talking today. And anything that I don't have the answer for, I will get back to you within 24 hours. <clears throat> I want to take a minute to talk a little bit about um, CDI just really briefly, uh, although about only about 30% of you aren't doing business with us today, so I'll try to shrink that. And again, if there's something more you want to talk about in terms of dealing with us at the end of this process outside of this program, uh, there's some places you can connect with us, and I'd be happy to have those conversations. So I'm going to introduce EdTech as a service, explain what it is, talk about the benefits, and then uh, how do you find out more, and how does it work, and how do you engage? So just from a real quick snapshot of uh, CDI, we've been providing technology-based solutions to the education marketplace for over 30 years and really have evolved into it from a device company to a, a, a education solution-based company. So today we look at how we can help organizations, how we can help educational organizations enable uh, them to enable students to learn in a different way, utilizing technology very, very effectively. And we talk about helping you connect, deploy, and inspire uh, through education. Um, you know, one of the ways we we're trying to do that is figure out a program like this that will allow you to get uh, more technology in the hands of more kids and make it simpler for you to budget and to, to purchase. And uh, it's, it's just kind of the direction that CDI continues to, to take. We've introduced a whole bunch of new, uh, uh, collaboration products and technologies that help the kids engage differently. And this is really a financial model or program that allows you to utilize that technology sooner. Um, again, I talked about us, you know, helping you get uh, the best in class devices in the, in the classroom, um, you know, managing those devices because that's a challenge, you know, as we move to one to one, as you get more devices in the classroom, and I see that the majority of you folks come from the technology side. You didn't get a lot more resources. You didn't get a lot more help to manage, you know, five times, ten times as many devices as five, five, six years ago. So we're working with a number of vendors and, and, and best of breed technology to help you manage those devices. And, of course, all of that is just a tool to inspire the students to get more uh, out of the education that you're providing. Again, very high snapshot of CDI. We, we provide all kinds of technology. If there are other pieces you want to know about us at the end of this, uh, there is a, a lot of ways you could connect with us that I'll show you in the last couple of slides. Uh, today, we've we served over 10,000 schools, and we have about 2 million devices that we support in the education space in North America. And this uh, map just kind of gives you an idea of where we're doing business today. Um, so why we're here today is really to talk about uh, this program. I'm going to close the poll now. I don't know if it's disturbing any of you, but I think everybody's answered. Um, and um, really why we're here today is talk, to talk about this program. The um, whole concept really comes about, and it's been, it's been launched uh, in Europe for some time with other companies. It's been around in the commercial space for a while. But it really is thinking in terms of technology being consumed in a different way than the way we typically buy it, use it, comes to the end of life, we either dispose of it or trade it in for something newer. But, you know, we don't have the opportunity to cycle it as quickly as we want to. We consume it as an asset, which is, you know, very fast appreciating, you know, limited life cycle asset that in most cases makes more sense to use as a service than it does as owning it as an asset. So we, we try to imagine a world where, you know, educational organizations treat a technology like they used to treat textbooks, where they have a, a, a price per student per year budget. It's operational. I, I don't, you know, I don't use capital budget, but I can still get the same technology. I can get more of it, and I can 
refresh it quicker. So instead of going out and raising all kinds of capital, we, you know, we saw a world where they would pay a flat fee, where educational organizations would pay a flat fee per student, per year, per seat, with some flexibility of being able to change that like any other subscription on an annual basis, so that if your enrollment changes, et cetera, you would be able to, to, uh, to adjust accordingly. Um, you know, and really providing a menu of products and services that the, uh, you folks can choose from. And at the end of that, you know, you've got a single point of contract, contact to, in, for all your technology needs, and you have a single uh, payment per student per month on an annual or quarterly basis that allows you to budget better. It allows you some flexibility in terms of uh, being locked in. Um, and, you know, I know it's challenging, and I saw that in the poll, that it's really challenging for most of you to find the money you need, the capital you need on an annual basis to go after it year after year. You know, we're seeing, as I said, in the commercial space and certainly in some European countries, this is how education, or this is how commercial organizations and educational organizations are starting to think from a budgetary standpoint. So it's now an operating cost, and I know that on an annual basis, and I'm making up a number, it's going to cost me $200 per student per year to equip a classroom with technology. So that could be the front of the class, you know, with an with a interactive flat panel, 30 devices, a teacher device, some professional development, uh, everything I kind of need for a year. What does that look like on a single seat payment basis, which makes it a lot easier for everybody, we believe, to budget and to fund. So, you know, really what it is, it's a, a comprehensive solution that combines hardware, software, services in a sub single subscription fee. And that includes subscriptions that you may already have. We can roll it all into this. So things like if you had a GoGuardian subscription or a Microsoft subscription that was today a, a SaaS model and you just wanted one payment, one place to go, we can roll that all into a single payment. And it really allows you to have some flexibility. So I'm, I always get asked, what's the difference between this and a lease? And the difference really is you think about it as a rental program. So we give you the ability to go up unlimited. If you want to add seats, obviously we're happy to add to the subscription and to, to uh, you know, reduce the number of devices you have by 20% on an annual basis. So, um, and, uh, there is some caveats to that in terms of, you know, the minimum acquisition number of uh, assets has to be worth in the $10,000 range for us to be able to do this. And what we found is that flexibility for some people is really important and for others isn't that important. But for most organizations, they like the ability to think of a rental payment per student per year, if you will. So what, what can we include in this program? What technology can you add in? Obviously, devices, student teacher devices. You think about the back of the room, as I like to refer to it, which is your charging solutions, your storage solutions, um, accessories, headsets, mice, uh, whatever accessories you need in your classroom can be bundled into this. Uh, we look at interactive flat panels. So a lot of organizations are trying to move there quickly and the cost of doing that because of the cost of the device is somewhat prohibitive. So we can actually build it into a flexible program that allows you to add those devices in. And then of course, productivity and educational software. So either, you know, a, a perpetual license that you need to acquire that we will put into this program or a subscription that you're now looking at that we can roll into a single payment. And other things that people are looking at using, utilizing this for STEM and STEAM programs, things like maker spaces or, you know, a, a VR kits for their school, et cetera. From a, um, a services standpoint, and I, I noticed there's no questions. I just want to write, I hope I remembered. I'd like to be as interactive as possible. Um, the, uh, I haven't seen any questions yet, so maybe I'm just, we're not there yet, but feel free at any time and I'll try to answer the questions as I can. So from a planning perspective, if there are uh, planning requirements, we have to, you know, put something together that there's a cost associated, with, you can roll that in. Certainly people are looking at professional development. So if you buy, if you use this to do your school and you know on an annual basis, I need to use, uh, you know, 20 professional development days and you can get funding for that from a different source, but you, we can build it all into an annual 
uh, payment again so that you look at a single payment per seat that includes what you need from a technology standpoint for that year and the and the following years of course deployment services uh, managed services so today you're starting we're starting to look at cdi is starting to look at maybe moving into the managed services business where we could take away kind of the day-to-day -day, change my password those kind of things because that can all be done in both a chrome and windows environment today remotely quite easily so you know look for us to be looking at, at adding those services but if we do and when they're ready they would be able to be into a program like this and any support services any break fix services that you needed as well so from a warranty standpoint um, we would build the warranty into the program so there is a single again a single payment per year we tried to provide as much flexibility in terms as we could so three and four year terms um, again flexibility and device being able to add devices being able to remove up to 20 percent of your devices um, and um, really be able to provide us a, a tailored solution on a life cycle basis so if you plan on keeping uh, you know your Chromebooks for three years or your Windows devices for three or four years then the, the program continues we just cycle those devices and add new one oh, somebody was asking about renting a couple thousand Chromebooks for a three-month period uh, Tim Timothy uh, I'll uh, flip you an email at the end of this and we could talk about that because we do have a rental company uh, that's part of our organization for short-term rentals um, and again I look at this as a, a modern service model that really simplifies how you buy you know a cost-effective way of getting the technology into the hands of students sooner and really what we are hearing from our customers in the education space is you know we like the fact that there's a predictable low cost per student per year for all our technology needs we'd love to have access to newer technology sooner um, uh, we would love to be able to get um, you know unburden our tasks for our IT staff the day-to-day -day tasks and, and Christy had actually asked me when do we expect to uh, uh, except man or, or be able to, <laughs> to manage devices I'm sorry um, and uh, Christy again if you want to reach out to me at the end of this or to your sales rep we are looking you know we need a couple of customers to get this started with and you know more than happy to talk about how we can kind of do a crawl walk run with an organization to get us into that space um, again the tools that are available to us today to do that from a remote location and build it into a program like this are substantially better uh, than they were three or four years ago making this a lot more affordable for both of us for us and for you um, and I'll, I'll get into that conversation Christy maybe you and I can have a, a chat afterwards and we'll get into the details of what my concept of what this could be and then we also get people talking about using operating uh, budget versus capital budget and the and the challenge on an annual or every three years to go out and get a vast amount of money you know get a bond you know raise some taxes you know put a sales tax on we see this going on to buy something that's life cycle is no longer six seven eight years I mean when you know maybe six seven years ago we were still seeing devices that were utilized effectively in a classroom that were five years or older the devices that are being produced and put in the students hands aren't made to live that long anymore so it's becoming a more consumptive model just from the technology and we think the financial model should align with that and you know really when you, when you look at that purchasing hardware limits you to the ability to upgrade it I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with uh, with organizations who are just stuck with old technology and they and they know desperately they want to get out of that this eliminates that trap if you will that it, you already know you can budget operationally it's two hundred dollars a student per year whatever the number is based on the technology you're not going to be stuck with obsolete I did put a couple of uh, examples together to give you an idea of what it costs per student and I didn't really even know how to address quantities but you could multiply this out if you will and, and it'll give you a few ideas and uh, two things one is we'll be sharing this uh, web session we're recording it and we'll share it with everybody uh, in the next 24 hours so you don't have to take a lot of notes the slide presentation is part of that recording 
So um, uh, hopefully that, that will answer any of your questions. But this is a prime example. You know, we look at 60 student devices, non-touch Chromebooks with a max case protective case. So they'll last as longer than if they're unprotected. A three year, what we call the extreme warranty, which is, uh, you know, accidental damage, spillage, etc. So you're guaranteed to be up and running, no cost outside of this. Uh, you get two carts, 60 devices. So this is really two classrooms. And this is kind of an entry level model. We haven't included services or anything that you might want to bundle, but it's $135 per seat per year. I'm just trying to, I'm sorry, I'm reading a question. Um, if, uh, would this include any insurance for damaged devices? So it covers damaged devices. We haven't yet, in the extreme, we don't include theft, but everything else is covered. Uh, and yes, that would include the prep of the devices. So in that is your Chrome licenses, it's your uh, white glove service. That's all built into this price. And uh, th that would go out to you. Uh, I think, would it be arrived ready to go? Yes. So likewise, all of that's done prior to it coming out. Um, so here's another one. This is a single classroom. I think the other one was, this is for, oops, I skipped one because it looks exactly the same. Why aren't you moving? All right. The touch Chromebook ones, by the way, I, I, I as a typo here, somebody changed it. It should be, I think it's 155. So it goes out a, up about $20 a year for the three year period, which kind of makes sense because it's about $60 more for that the device than it is for the other one. And here's another one. This would include, and this was like a perfect classroom environment. You know, you've got 30 devices. You've got one day hands-on instruction, professional development day. You've got a charging cart, and you've got an interactive whiteboard at the front of the room. And that's about $225 a seat. Obviously, the product that we choose, all of those things are going to change the price per seat um, and hopefully that would uh, hopefully that would resolve it and then somebody asked would it arrive on site ready to go yeah would that include management of the dice during the year uh, adding extensions etc again Christy I, I'd, I'd love to have a conversation with you offline about this because in, in my vision that it would include those things the question is uh, we we haven't put a box around those services yet. So we're still working on that, but love to figure out how we could work together to make that happen. Um, so how does it work? I just, you know, kind of, this is one of the questions I think somebody just asked. And really what we try to do when we go through this is walk you through each product part of it. So Basically, what you have to think about is what would my, what do I want my environment to look at like? You would have a conversation with your CDI sales representative. Basically, they would build then the technology that you're looking for. We would customize the program and come back to you with a proposal that says there are two or three options depending on what you pick from the menu. Here's what it costs per seat per year. Here's the flexibility level. So we offer 20%. Obviously, if somebody says, yeah, I only need 5%, then we could take some of that out of, the, out of the price. So it is a bit of a custom model, but it requires us to have a conversation with you in terms of what are your technology needs? What are your services needs that we can actually provide today? And how does, what does that look like? And what, what does that cost? Um, and, and then we put it together a program that allows you to, um, you, you know, acquire it on a, a per services basis. Uh, Timothy, yeah, Timothy's asking me how it saves money. Uh, Tim, the, Timothy, what it does is, again, it provides you some flexibility. It, there's no magic. We can't, um, it, you know, if some of the products have some residual value at the end of a three-month, three-year program, depending on the products, it, it will save you money because you're only paying for the, the cost of the usage of the device. But in most cases, you, you, you're paying for the device over that period of time. And again, you have the flexibility to return 20% on an annual basis. You have the flexibility uh, to add to that at any time through the program. And it really is a rethink of, of budgeting, a rethink of spending. And we think, again, this is the way product will be consumed. 
uh, uh, you know, I wish I had a magic wand that would say this would, you know, save you a lot of money. What it does do for you is it allows in a lot of cases for you to spread the costs out over a number of years uh, so you can get to one-to-one -one quicker, so you can get new technology in front of the kids today, in front of the students today, so you can do the STEM things you want to do, et cetera. All of that at, at a single cost, and then you start to think about that as your budget going forward. It stops you again from going out and having raising tons of capital. There are people, there are people, there are organizations, educational organizations, the way they're funded would struggle trying to figure out how to do this operationally today. We just think this is the wave of the future and that we expect people to start budgeting operationally instead of, um, you know, capital going out, raising all that capital and buying the technology as it depreciates. So uh, again, I've tried to answer all your questions as we've gone through this. I hope I explained the program, the benefits. Uh, Christy, you and I sh should connect. Um, for those of you, um, my email address is gcollins at cditechnologies.com. If anybody wants to reach out to me directly, I'd be happy to have that conversation. But if you want to find out what it looks like, so what we've done for a lot of people is they, they have a little trouble grasping what it would cost in their world, et cetera. All I ask you to do is reach out to your sales rep. If you don't know who your sales rep is, there's an info at cditechnologies.com email address you can use. Tell them kind of what you see as your vision for the next year or a couple of years in terms of the number of devices, what devices, what the deployment looks like, how, how, what you'd like to get off your plate in terms of services. And um, we can then put together a, uh, a program that would suit your, um, your needs. There is a, a, some more information on our website. Uh, but again, you all have my email address. This is a program that I've kind of conceived and I'm trying to round out. So please, by all means, reach out to me or your sales rep either. And we'll, we'll be happy to connect with you. And, uh, and get going. So I, I have some good comments back, but it looks like a great option, etc. cetera. Um, and um, I'm, I'm happy to answer any other questions at this time, but if not, I, I don't wanna babble on and take up your time. I know how busy everybody is. It's a crazy time of year. And I really appreciate you guys showing up uh, even today. Again, if you're suspicious, if you don't understand, if you'd like an example, please reach out to your rep and we'll put something in your hand and try to explain it to you in more detail. So thank you on behalf of CDI. Uh, I appreciate the time you take with us. And by the way, most of you are customers. So thank you very much for the ongoing business. Uh, appreciate your time. Have a great day.